Hello, David. Uh, thank you very much for your time uh, tonight. We finally made it. You know, the third time is the charm. Uh, it took a while to get together, but I'm very happy to have you on on my show. And thank you for your time. And I nearly, I nearly forgot. Really? I had John, I had John the manager of the car, Cardiacs, text me going, he's in my borough tonight. Uh, can he meet me at the gate to say hello? And, and he said that last night. And I, I said, yeah, but I've got an interview tomorrow. So I have to see how it goes. And then at like 6.30, he texted me. And, I went, and it was like, oh, yes, I know what I'm supposed to be doing. I, I've nearly forgotten again. Oh, you, I, you. I bet you're honest. That's fine. I've, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a three-year-old. You, you, you have know, a nice excuse. You have a good excuse. Yeah, this is dinner time and bedtime and CBB story time and, and all that. And, and it, it just, you, you just forget what, you, what you're supposed to be doing. Yep. Uh, and and I, I can also share from my end, I was invited to, the, I have a nice uh, friend who has uh, a private sauna, you know, because a sauna here in Germany, everything is closed. So, and he invited me to the sauna tonight, but I said, you know, no, I cannot come because I have a talk with uh, David and this is very important for me. <laughs> and uh, so, you, you know, we, we both sacrifice to be here. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, well, so, I'm David, I'm, yeah. I'm David from the band Calling All Astronauts. Uh, we're, uh, it's hard to pigeonhole us. Mm -hmm. We, but we're kind of industrial meets big beat meets punk rock meets goth meets uh, meets dubstep at times meets drum and bass at times we we just we kind of take all our influences uh, in from everywhere uh, we, we, we're a three piece Jay uh, the guitarist he was in a band called Caffeine who toured uh, two big Uh, UK tours with the Offspring. He's toured the. He's toured Europe with the Dickies. He's toured America. Uh, he uh, played with Blink 182, with AFI, with Rancid, all sorts of things. Rammstein, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, he's never, never Rammstein. Rancid. Oh, oh, so uh, sorry, I misheard. I misheard. Sorry, sorry. Uh, Paul uh, was in the, uh, the bass player and keyboard player. Uh, he was in a band called the Marionettes, who who were very popular in Germany. Uh, they, they played uh, Zillow Festival. Oh yeah, I know. On, and uh, uh, Treff and Gothic, and the, you mean sort of wave, wave Gothic, Wave Gothic Treffen? Yes, that's it. That's mm -hmm. the one. Uh, It's the biggest one in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, Uh, the three of us used to be in a band together years ago. We were in a, a rap metal band in the in the late eighties, and uh, we played with people like Pop Will Eat Itself and Faith No More and and Twenty Four Seven Spies and stuff like that. And we all went off and did different stuff, and then we got together and started making music again. Uh, we've had three albums out so far and about twenty odd singles. We, the, the latest album is mainly just me and Paul because uh, Jay had a, had, a, had a big family crisis oh. and uh, so he couldn't get around here to write or, or anything. So he's only on about four tracks on the album. So we've done most of his current album as a two piece. Uh, we, we record everything here. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's all, it's all done in this very room. <laughs> like, uh, But we like being DIY. We couldn't spend as many hours making music if we had to pay for studio time mm -hmm. every time. And in today's world, as long as you've got a decent interface, a computer and Ableton 10 or... Or something. You know, other, other, other DAWs are available, <laughs> as they say. You know... Uh, You can you can make great stuff at home if you if you learn how to use your equipment properly and how to produce properly. Uh, we we had we've had a lot of luck on the current album. Uh, 
a friend of ours. Well, he's a friend of Paul, but he's now a friend of mine as well. Uh, is a producer called Alan Branch, mm-hmm. and Alan Alan's had two Grammys. Uh, I don't know who he got the Grammy. Oh yeah, he got one of them for. Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> but he, he won two Grammys. But he's okay. also worked with people like Nine Inch Nails and Depeche Mode and U2. Uh, he, he was the house engineer at a lot of the unused sound stuff with Adrian Sherwood, working with Tackhead and Mark Stewart and all that. And uh, he came over while, while I was mixing the album and gave me a, like, tutorial, if you would. He mm-hmm. gave me a one-on-one sort of freebie type thing and helped me set up my, my plugins better for each, each channel and all that for the mixes. And so the mi- the album, I mixed all myself. Mm-hmm. But Alan then said, I'll, I'll mix a single for you. And from one single, it's turned into his... Because we decided he wanted to release the whole album as singles. Mm-hmm. And he's now just mixed a seventh single. Okay, <laughs> so album. it's... it's- yeah, it's it's at least an EP, but it might become the whole album. I I I, I take it. We, well, we we've <laughs> had this is this uh, uh, resist was the the actual sixth single of the mm-hmm. album. We've got a video for e- each one, uh, and the next one's fifteen minutes, and I've already done the video for for that. So uh, that's about to be set up to be released probably seven or eight weeks time, something like that. I've still I've still got to do the artwork for it, but. I do everything from mm-hmm. make videos to. So did did you do also the video for Resist? Yeah, I did that. Wow, it's it's. Uh, I mean, it's heads up to you, sir. This is uh, you know, I I did one video once uh, for my workplace because we asked you to you know because I'm I'm um, I'm an actor so you know I'm also do some voice stuff and so oh do this and and I did it. But I hated it, you know. It's it's taking forever. Um, but I mean, I wow, heads up! I mean, honestly, very well done. Thank you. Uh, I've been doing it for a few other people as well. Uh, uh, I can't. Jay Tennant, a, a chap called Jay Tennant. I've just done one for him. A band called Tough on Fridays. I did one for them. Uh, I turned a few down. There was mm-hmm. one the other week a guy wanted me to do. And, and, you know, I, I, I use stock footage from a, a library and then I do all the editing. And uh, all okay, the, okay, all okay, okay. Because, yeah, there were some, some, some robots in there and I was like, oh, man, if you really animated them and, okay. Uh, so, no, no, ah, no. okay, 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 okay. So the, hmm. the talent, the skill is in sourcing all the, the footage. Okay, got it. Making the story mm-hmm. to go with it, doing the edits, getting every, everything on the beats and, it, 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 when yeah. when it's really I mean it's uh you know it's remarkable still because when for me it kind of was um, a seamless blend you know it, now that I know that it's stock f- uh, stock footage when yeah. uh, okay when I will see maybe things you know where where we get but now I, I hadn't known this and I really thought you made this this specific animation for this video so well done. <laughs> There's probably probably half a million pounds worth of footage in that that video, for time wise. Because my 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 nephew, uh, he just finished a uni last last year in France, uh, doing CGI and everything. Mm-hmm. And he he, he, he he sort of in between lockdowns, he said, "Right, I'm going to move to England. There's a lot more being made there," and within three weeks of getting here he lands a job with Ardman animation oh wow you know the people in yeah. wallace and Grubbers i know i know what that's yeah. what the biggest yeah. one in 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 uh in england i think right yeah yeah, yeah. wow i'm just like so proud of him mm. very prestigious uh, maybe not as proud as i was when he got uh gassed in the demonstrations in, in france last year six times what's gassed in in the See us gassed by the police demonstrating. Oh, gassed, gassed. I now I got it. So, sorry. 
you know, you know, it's it's a funny, funny tidbit, and and it's absolutely not your fault. But I'm talking to mostly American uh, uh, artists, so uh, your your British accent is is cool. But I I need to get used to it a little bit, you know. So <laughs> that's why the gust. Uh, it's like uh, ah, I I didn't get, now I get it. Sorry, sorry for that. The uh, years ago, he'd come over to stay with me, me and my wife when he was like 15, and he said to me one day, he said, uh, Uncle David. What's the difference between Labour and the Conservatives? And I said, if you if you're a Labour supporter, you care about other people. If you're a Tory, you don't give a fuck about anybody else. I and I have I, and now he's a socialist. Okay. <laughs> you, know? You, you know that that I grew up in in East Germany. In, in the GDR, so in a in a communist regime, so uh, I have my my share of uh, socialism, you can say. But um, yeah, uh, if you want, we, we can talk about this. But but maybe I used, to, I used to have a girlfriend from the from the GDR. Oh, okay. What's her name? Uh, Diana. Diana. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, the. Uh, my, I've got an ex-wife who, who, who's Croatian, okay. And, but their their version of Iron Curtainism, if you would, was way different than what yours was. Yes, because T T Tito had a mixture of socialism and free enterprise, and rather than everybody working directly for the state. You would work regionally. You'd work independently, and you, you know they had no they had no restrictions on freedom of travel or anything yeah. And like also that. Hungary Hungary was quite uh, quite open uh, back back then. You know um, we had a, a very loose border agreement or something. You know uh, as as you might remember. You know this was also where it came down that the the East Germans would uh, flee over Hungary. To uh, right. to um, uh, what's the the small one? Uh, Austria, <laughs> to Austria, yeah. and and then to to Germany, um, to West Germany. Anyway, yeah. So, okay, you, I, I already can see we have tons of stuff we could talk about. Um, you know, but but I, I must tell you this. While okay, we're yeah. on the subject, my friend's mother went over the wall. Oh wow! And got shot. No, that's not good. She didn't get killed, but she did get shot. Okay. And she and she she, she escaped, if you would, mm -hmm. and walked with a limp for the rest of her life. Did Erica? But uh, yeah. Okay. She, wow. She yeah. Made I mean, across the barbed wire and and, and, all, and all that bit. Wow. Cool. I mean, so you, you know some. Uh, you know, the, the cool thing is that's that's really some some big part of history. You know, and I. Um, I'm actually quite quite happy that I'm old enough that I remember it. I was 14 as the war came down, so I still remember the pre-war uh, came down yeah. thing. So, um, so that kind of shaped my view on socialism and communism and stuff. So I'm not really absolutely against it, but you you know, it's it's. Uh, um, I think as you are more punk inclined, so you're more. In, in drifting towards uh, uh, the socialism uh, stuff, but it's I, 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 I'm I'm centre left mm -hmm. it, it, because the new left are no different than the fascists. They they, they, they become they become extremes, mm -hmm. and the world doesn't want extremes. The world wants social socialist social policies. Mm -hmm. But everybody wants to be aspirational. And okay. Whereas, whereas a lot of the new left in Britain want to wear poverty as a badge of honour. Mm -hmm. And and to, for me that uh, doesn't work. I see. I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah. No. Um. Uh. This is kind of uh. There's a there's a uh, um, um signalling. Uh. No. What's it? What's it? Uh. Virtue yeah, signalling. Vir virtue yeah. signalling. You know. We yeah. just want to. Um. This is I'm I'm absolutely not this type of guy. <laughs> it, it's, there's there's just so much nonsense nowadays. You 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 know, and really good causes get destroyed 
by cyber warriors. Mm -hmm. And by, by silly, silly things, you know, um, like like debates. Um, I, I, I have to admit, I don't know much about um, your politics. I mean, in the UK, uh, but but I think some some uh, um, big themes is like um, gender debates and, and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, which pronoun to take and stuff. This is kind of silly I things it at all. Yeah, I, I, I think it's so Yes, sorry, go ahead. You, you, you know, uh, to me, you you judge, judge, you don't judge people on the race, color, creed, religion, sexual orientation. You judge them on whether they're an asshole or not. They, that's that's, exa <laughs> that's exactly the point. And and you know, like, like um, you know, the Germans. Um, just today, I was shopping, and I was like, um, would I, like, um defend all these people and stuff, you know, uh, when, uh, and, and I would, you know, I, I like my people, but if you take some, some ones like, oh, you like this person? Uh, no, he looks like uh, not a nice person. I don't want, yeah, no. And, yeah, yeah. and this is exactly the point. Um, and and with, a, with, a, with a sanitized um, wordings or, or speaking, Uh, I don't need any swear words to to um, be n not nice to you. You know, I can I can use whatever language I I have to my uh, um, uh, opportunity no, not opportunity to to my um, you know what what I can use anyway. So you see, but that's that's why I don't do uh, I like I don't like to talk so late because my English gets worse uh, when yeah. when I'm getting tired. You know, um, yeah. because I'm a crazy guy. I get up usually at four. And so for me, this is quite late, you know, um, wow. but but it's fine. It's fine. I don't have a three year old like you. Uh, I my, my daughter is uh, eight, but uh, I, I just uh, early riser. I'm I like the morning. I'm a morning person. Yeah, I, I, I go to bed about two and I get up at around seven. Well, no, that's also quite short. Yeah, yeah, it's uh... I've got a three-year-old, as we said. <laughs> yes, but, yes. We, we, but, we, you know, Ger Germany's suffering from the rise of the right again at the minute, isn't it? it yes. A lot of national... You know, uh, it was... Was it Stalin that said uh, religion is the cancer of, of society? But if you ask me, nationalism is by far the, the worst thing. Yeah, Fal it's... it's... Fal False, false, you know, and the way that, that nationalists have of late stolen the word patriot, mm -hmm. it's wrong. There's a vast difference. A patriot loves this country, a mm -hmm. nationalist hates everybody else's. Oh, that's oh, that's a really. I should really try it because I just wanted to say, you know, that the problem with him is, uh, you should love your country. You know, you should be happy about where, where you are. You know, we are really blessed. You know, I, I I used to live in Africa and I saw other places. You know, where just because you're born there, you don't have a, a good start into into this world. So I'm very very happy and blessed. You know, like I I told yeah. you that I grew up in the GDR, but I can compare systems you know i grew up in a communist yeah. system and now i can compare it with a with a capitalist system so um and, and neither one of them is is perfect you know so uh That's it's and uh, but it's wait i need to write down your your um it was a really cool so a nationalist hey uh a so a patriot loves his country a nationalist hates everybody else's that's a good point loves its country No, it's a really good, good description because this was exactly what I wanted to say, you know. But I still love my country, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud of what we achieved and 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 how how nice we can be. And we have Goethe and Schiller, and and you know we have, um, uh, um, okay, Mozart was uh, an Aust Austrian, so no, we don't count him. But but you know Bach, uh, Beethoven, uh, you know we have we have great stuff. We can we can be really proud of. Huh? Miller, Franz Beckenbauer. Oh uh, yeah, okay. I'm not. I'm not a soccer fan. I saw. Yeah, you. You like soccer, right? Oh, big fan. Oh nah, that's that's not me. Y you know, I I used to live uh, uh, quite a while um, abroad, 
And and when somebody asks me, oh, so why don't you live in Germany? I, I say, I got kicked out of Germany because I don't like beer and I don't like soccer. So they kicked me out. <laughs> but Germans do like a beer generally, don't they? Yeah, but I'm yeah I'm very un un German in this thing. Uh, um, I have to admit. Wait, wait I'm I'm not the, the fastest rider. Nationalist hates I'm, everyone. I'm drinking else. French wine at the minute. Okay, D does your does your nephew brought it? No, no, we bought it in the supermarket the other day. Uh, it was one of those uh, Cotton de Provence rosés that are very popular now, and it was it was really at an affordable price. It was from like it was probably about nine euros, but uh, uh, yeah, yeah, you have pounds. About fifteen or fourteen, mm -hmm. and it, it, it's quite palatable. It, okay, it's, uh, I I'm, got into I'm, it last year. Pardon me? Last year, not last year, year before last. Last year didn't happen, did it? Twenty twenty, we we all stayed in the house for the year, but twenty nineteen, uh, my sister lives in the south of France, and. Uh, they buy this Cotton de Provence rose in big, like five litre tubs. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, and we were drinking it every night while we're there. Because uh, they, they, have they have a full size snooker table in their house. And so we would drink the wine and play snooker every night while we were, while we were on holiday at theirs. Yeah, um, I'm, 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 a, I'm a bad. I'm I'm not an anti-socialite, but I don't drink. You know, it's not that I only d don't drink beer. I don't drink at all usually. But I'm not a teetotaler. It's just uh, I never got into it. You know, in drinking alcohol. But anyway, I, I'm I'm not here to talk about me. I realize you know we're going to talk about you. So let's let's maybe start I with. Used a... to, I used to drink a lot. Okay. Uh, uh, you know, two or three bottles of vodka a week and. Wow. That's a lot. And shots. And I did that for quite a long time. And then when we started C CAA, I kind of stopped drinking. I just drink at events now. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, you know, or occasionally I'll have a glass of wine at home with, with, with dinner on a weekend. But, you know, like we go to Medem in Cannes and then I'm on the drink. We go to Reading Festival. I'm on the drink. But, mm -hmm. I, but I won't drink for weeks on end nowadays. So. You, you know, my, my take on this is, uh, I mean, with, with, uh, I, I have to warn you, we should not talk about drugs because I, I talked with this uh, about somebody else and, and YouTube kind of gave me a warning. Um, so, but my take on, on, on the whole substances is if you can handle it, do whatever you like to do, as long as you don't, um, you know, abuse it or get gets abused by it, or you you hurt other people. That's absolutely fine, fine with me. Yeah, I don't I don't do drugs myself, but other people, if they want to do them, it's their choice. Uh, although I would say, don't do heroin. I I have no, you know, I I don't even I drink, don't drink, you know. I don't do cocaine. Really I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, there's quite a few drugs people really shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we, we, uh, the other day I was talking uh, with, with a friend of mine uh, who I'm in a project with and, and we said, uh, and I told to him, you know, we are really not rock and rollers. I mean, we, we don't do much sex, no drugs. We just do rock and roll. So uh, we are kind of, we, we got something wrong here. But anyway, Let's go back to you. Um, and I told you, this is not a, a normal interview. You know, it's it's more a talk. But even though I still have some questions, and I apologize yeah. be beforehand because the first question I have will be most likely very stupid, but I don't know it, so I'm going to ask it. Um, why did you call your band Calling All Astronauts? Uh, I guess there's a story for that. And you might have told it a thousand times, but I don't know. A thousand and one times. Now. Oh, okay, now. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. But it was, we were, we were messing around trying to come up with names. And I, I kept coming, my names were just getting stupider and stupider. And uh, Jay, the guitarist, used to, 
he was obsessed with UFOs and stuff like that. And so I've got that on my mind. And then I saw an article in the newspaper that NASA were looking for astronauts. Oh. And, and, the, and the headline was calling all astronauts. And that. What's that? It's as simple as that. Okay, but uh, it's, it's a nice story. And sorry that, that you have to tell it again, but I, I didn't know um, how... Usually I write the words down, so it makes a change to answer it. Orally. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, I also, you know, the, the, the funny thing is um, I have a play, you know, I have a radio show Uh, where, I, where I do uh, play uh, music, uh, you know, from what I like. And, I, you know, I'm into the goth and, and industrial and dark wave. That's kind of my, my corner where I, yeah. where I live. Um, and I remember because um, I usually... I add, sorry to interrupt you, but I must add you to our promo list. Oh, yeah, you can do that, please. Please do that. Um, okay. what, what I wanted to say is kind of, um, you know, I'm, I'm a small small guy you know uh, uh in influencer wise i don't like this influencer thing because i only play the stuff i really like uh, so i don't want to influence anyone i'm just showing them what i like and but what i do is i do a shout out for my show you know um every week uh, is a show and then i put in all the bands i'm gonna play in this show and i did it on twitter and <laughs> i was like you know i was playing a song from you and And usually my uh, tweets get like 500 views or something, or maybe a thousand or something. And then it exploded. And I was like, what is going on here? And I couldn't, because, you know, I'm, I'm kind of niche. I play a lot of indie artists, you know, not big names and whatever. And I was like, what, what is going on here? Something is, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell. And and when I I saw you know I clicked I, I clicked through the uh, list and when I saw you have quite a following on Twitter, you know it's 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 incredible and it was you who kind of uh, retweeted a tweet, for, you know where, where I kind of uh, put put you in, and, and that's why it exploded. I got like five thousand or six thousand. It was like I never get so many and and so um, anyway. I, I was quite stunned by that, and and you have like almost a million uh, people following you on on Twitter, and I'll, 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 if I could interrupt. Yeah, oh, go go ahead. I was the, the, the truth about our Twitter is more people follow us for what we tweet, what I tweet, mm -hmm. than our music. I that's that's. That's the next thing I'm, I wanted to talk because right. uh, I saw you also are big on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook, so I'm, I really miss on miss on that. But I saw, yeah, you post a lot of funny stuff. So yeah. uh, you're like you're like a meme did creator or something. Of, uh, did you see the one of your pri your pr president, prime minister? No. Oh, uh, it's it's brilliant. It's a builder. And he, me, he, he, this, this builder, and he's got a T-shirt on of Angela Merkel, mm. and he's bent over, so as you get his builder's bottom at the back. Ah, doch, yeah, yes, I, I saw it, I saw it. We, we call it, we call it, uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, we call like a cleavage, and it's uh, hilarious. Yeah, how, how do you call, um, I, we have a name for this in, in German as well. This, this is a, like a, um, a handyman uh, um, um Bustier, no, how, cleavage, handyman cleavage, you know, because we, often we, we bend over and, and, and work, yeah, work yeah, on yeah. something. So you see this a lot. And uh, there's funny cards, I guess you, in, in UK you have them as well, funny cards where you kind of for your birthday and then, you know, we got some special extra gift for you and pff, and then you open yeah. it and then it's uh, it's the, the ass crack of somebody. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. Okay, yeah, no, I, I, I saw this one and I was like, yeah, uh, Okay, now now I get why you 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 you, so, so, you come up with this stuff yourself, or do you get it from somewhere and, and you just retweet it, or um, uh, so it's, I I I tweet a lot of quite, I wouldn't say provocative, but I would say it's stuff I find important. I mm -hmm. regularly call out racists. I, I call out I call out transphobes all, all the time. I call out xenophobes. I I went to war with with Brexiteers, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, 
and and I swear at trolls a lot, and and I really swear at trolls a lot, and I I, I give them a, more abuse than they've given me in the first place. But it, they should keep their own tweets to themselves. They shouldn't go trying to bully people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I've had I've had wars with all sorts of pop fans, and you you know these where they have these they're almost like hate bots armies of you know you say something like. Oh, Taylor Swift, she she wore this dress to the to the uh, Grammys that looked like uh, a pair of curtains, mm-hmm. uh, and I tweeted a picture of it and said, "Oh, uh, I hope Taylor Swift has got some new curtains to replace the ones she wore to the Grammys." And next second, I'm getting trolled by all these Taylor Swift fans, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes I'll play them along, like. On our first album sleeve, we 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 had the Illuminati eye, type, the you know the all seeing eye, mm-hmm. whatever yep. it's called, and we had some woman on some well some girl. She spent three hours having a go at us, telling us we were Illuminati and, and we, we're trying to take over the world and all sorts. And I get these people all the time, and sometimes, sometimes I use them. For, I don't mean to, but. Mm-hmm. They, they make Twitter entertaining for everybody. You yeah, know, but, like but, but 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 I kind of, um, I mean, this is more like a like a personal question, so you know, you don't have to answer it. But it, it's kind of, um, do you really think it's worthwhile to do that? Because I I remember I did it once. You know that I was just making a funny comment uh, after a, a music video. I, I didn't really men, meant it in honest, and I kind of made the smiley. So I thought you know people would see that I kind of make a fun fun comment, and then somebody exploded, and I was writing back, and you know because I felt misunderstood, and, and you know what's going. But but then you know I wasted so much time of back and forth. I mean. I- I block, I block and block. I have blocked mm-hmm. over five and a half thousand people on Twitter. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, most of them are Trump supporters, Brexiteers, mm-hmm. racists. You, you, you know, I just block these people. But, but idiots, like, some people, you know, I don't, I don't like to get where other people, other ones who are followers, it's okay if they're poking fun at them. But I don't mind. I don't like it if they're having a real go of being nasty. Mm-hmm. I don't want bullying. You, you, y- yeah, you, see, you, you know that's a there, distinction there was, between. There was, a, yeah. there, was, there was an Australian girl the other week who is convinced that being hungry is only a state of mind. Okay. And that we've been programmed into thinking we needing we need food. Okay. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell my car that. It doesn't really. It doesn't really need petrol. It's a state of mind. You know, you get you get some real food cakes on there. Yeah, yeah that's uh, that's. I I can clearly see that. Uh, thing a thing at the minute which which it, it it kind of irritates me, but I don't let it. I don't. I wouldn't let it irritate me. Uh, we'll get tagged in in things. And if we're in it, mm-hmm. yes, tag us, but we get tagged in other things. That And then suddenly my whole, uh, whatever it's called, that uh, I'll just have a look at that. I can't remember the word for it. Uh, mentions, mm-hmm. the whole mentions thing is people replying to this that's got nothing to do with me. Mm-hmm. And I'll have 200, I've got to scroll to, and then I'll miss things when people are actually say, talking to us. Okay, and, and that's why and that's why you, you kick them out, that you kind of uh, don't miss the important I, part. I mute, I mute those conversations hmm. all the time. Okay. Because I don't want, because it's often nice for people to include you in them, mm-hmm. but when somebody else takes over the thread and... It just ends up like spam on your timeline. But but see, this is um, I'm, I mean I'm in in a okay. I, I have to phrase it nicely. Um, the cool thing with you is you are using all this uh, social media thing, even if you're a little bit 
older. Yeah. Um, uh, so uh, because I, I'm a little bit younger than you, I guess, and I'm really suck at the social media thing because for me it's kind of like, ah, this is just another thing where you need to exist and and but but you even see to enjoy this, you know, to get into the trenches and to kind of uh, uh, poke fun at the bear and, and stuff. But how do you get all this time to do that? Isn't it time consuming? Isn't it like that? Um, I, I mean, uh, what's your what's your daily well, schedule for well, that? Well, my wife sat about five yards away from me. I'm going to have to be very diplomatic about this. Okay. Because the number of times she says to me, put your phone down, stop tweeting during dinner. Uh, <laughs> you're like you're like a little you're like a little uh, a teenager, you know. I mean, uh, yeah, um, I, I, I am, and. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll have days where I'm, I'm not up for it. Mm -hmm. But I have a lot of scheduled tweets that will go out anyway. But I, it's just something comes into my mind and I've got to do it. I've got, I've got, to, I've got to tweet it. And I'm not really tweeting to anybody. Mm -hmm. it's, it's almost like my soapbox. And, and I'm just saying, uh, film X, Y, Z that I've just watched is awesome or it sucks. Mm -hmm. and, and and I just I'm, if people you know occasionally I, I ask questions like who's the worst drummer you've ever seen who's the best drummer you've ever seen who, mm -hmm. you, you, you know I, I do those things I, li I like to get people involved and if you know we have kind of made a community mm -hmm. if, if you would and it's it's funny when you say about age uh, the music we make Reading the uh, the stats and the analytics and all this, uh, you know how like the vast majority of of uh, Spotify users are under eighteen. Mm -hmm. Our plays from under eighteen year olds are like two percent. Okay. We have more over sixties listening <laughs> to us than we have under eighteens. Okay. But, but this is how you've got to look. You have to look at it. Anybody who was a punk rocker in 1976 mm -hmm. is 60 plus or, or rapidly approaching it. Anybody who was a goth in the early, in the early 80s with, with Bauhaus and mm -hmm. uh, B movie and etc. right through to the sisters in the sort of mid 80s, if you would. They're all in the 50s. People who were into the baggy Manchester, they're all late 40s. So this is the first time where parents have got better musical taste than the children. That's, that's a good point. That's a good point. Because yeah, sometimes when you, when you listen to, I, I don't know, of course, of, in England, but... I cannot listen to a normal radio station. I mean, the good thing is I don't need to. You know, I'm, I I have um, I, I do a lot of on Spotify, but I also you know work for my radio station, and so I know there's you know there's tons of uh, internet radio stations out there, and so it's it's really cool. Um, but yeah, the normal radio really sucks, and also the high rotation thing. I get tired very fast. You know, I need a lot of different songs. That's why I, I started my own radio show because I wanted to play the music I wanted to hear and also in the in the cadence I wanted to hear it, you know, because yeah. I, I get bored if I listen to one artist all the, t you know, I mean, it's it's maybe not good to tell you this, but I, I, um, I like a hard song, I like a soft song, I like a pop song, I like a metal song, and I like it, da, da, da. you know, I like to mix it. I, I, I this it's always good, keeps me good. engaged. I, I've been doing a playlist re recently, uh, uh, 10 great songs a day, and I have them on, on seven day rotation. And it really is eclectic. Like the, 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 uh, the 10 latest ones I've put on, I'll just look at it. It's gone Lard, Dread Zone, Dick Dale, Fight Like Apes, Shirley and Lee, Faster Pussycat, The Donkeys, The Streets. Bugsy Malone, Helen Love, and The Showman. The Showman is uh, Northern Soul Tune. But, you know, you couldn't really pick 10 more different artists from a grime act to 
uh, Northern Soul like to. Uh, but but this is exactly like what I, what I like, you know, that it's that it's so uh, that it's an engaging uh, uh, thing, you know, because when you get a little, I you know, to be absolutely honest with you, I really like punk music, but if you know, I mean, now we are in in lockdown and whatever, but when I went to a punk rock concert. And and then the the band is playing, and the first song is really wow, fast, 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 and the second song is really fast, 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 and the third song is really fast, fast, fast. Then I'm like, okay, and now I would like to have a a down tempo number, a mid tempo number, you know, play around with things. There is dynamic uh, at, at 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 game here, you know. You can, I'm you know, if, you're not in the pit then. Pardon me. Because if you're in the pit, if you're in the mosh pit. You want everything to be full blast. Uh, yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, I, I dance, but I don't like the mosh pit. You know, I, I have classes, and sometimes I forget to put in a uh, uh, context and stuff. Then I go there. If you know, if it's just, or if I happen to be there, sometimes you get. You, I mean, in the past, you know, when we could go out, when we do, oh, you know, there's band playing, let's go in there, and and. Um, so when I kind of I'll be a little bit protective, you know, when I don't get uh, uh, shoved around so much and, and I dance because, you know, I don't drink. So what do I do there? I dance, um, but I don't go in the mosh pit. That's uh, very rarely. And yeah, that's true. I've seen, I've seen Ger Ger well, to me, the Germany's best punk band, but I can't name very many punk bands, but I've, I've seen Der Totenhausen in, in London. Die Toten Hosen, die Toten Hosen. Yeah. I, saw, I saw them play in London, must be, I don't know, 25 years ago, something like that. The singer actually has a, I think he has a, a, a mother f is from England, so he, he's actually quite yes, good in, yeah. in English. Um, My version of Old Lang Syne is great. From what? Old Lang Syne, the uh, song you sing on New Year, they did a cover of it. I, I don't know. Should all the acquaintance be forgotten? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay, yeah. So I, think I, uh, under, I think they did it under the name uh, Rotten Rosen. Die Roten Rosen, yeah, we, we made a fake album, you know, where we kind of uh, hit yeah, their yeah. identity. Toten Hosen, Roten Rosen, you know, so ha ha ha, you know, it, uh, back then it was fun, you know, today it's, it wouldn't, you, you know, I, I guess. Are they still going? They are still around. I don't know if they're, if they're, I mean, at the moment nobody plays live, but I'm not sure if they're making new music, but as far as I know, they are not disbanded or anything, so they are still around. Right. Yeah, because uh, that, that other big German band came back, what maybe three years ago now, might be slightly more, but uh, fantastic. Uh, the Fantastischen Vier, the Fantastischen Vier, yeah, the Fantastic uh, Four. Yes, uh, but this is yeah. rap. But I, as as you mentioned earlier, you were also uh, in a rap uh, a band. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, I'm not following them so closely. I have to admit. So. Um, I like them, they're, you know. They're, they're, they're like, their last album charted or something, didn't it? it? Went to number one or it got top really? ten. Really? Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, they did really well. I was talking to some German promoter friends of mine at uh, at a conference, and they were telling me just how. Uh, well, the, I heard a great story that, uh, about uh, a German comedian who was playing the Olympic Stadium. Okay. Uh, uh, um, uh, it, Bart, uh, what's his name? Uh, um, I think his last name is Bart, Michael Bart, or um, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I know. He likes, he likes to have lots of props and everything. And he had okay. a helicopter come into the stadium and, and stuff. And it, it, they had, there were safety issues and all sorts of things. And it cost him so much in production he actually lost money on the show despite selling out okay. the Olympic Stadium. Wow. Yeah, I, I think Mario, Mario Bart. I think his name is Mario Bart. That, that could be the guy. That could be yep. the guy. He's, uh, he's a little bit, he's a little bit, um, um, he, how, how should I say it nicely? His jokes are very simple. Uh, so um, he he has a um, 
a big following and and he can draw large crowds like like you you yeah. said you know but but it's kind of he's not very um uh subtle and not very deep in in no, in uh, no. uh, uh yeah but but it's Lowest fine you know it's entertainer pardon me lowest common denominator comedy exactly exactly yeah I, i was not getting getting the word right so so it's fine you know i can laugh about a few things from him but he has kind of a certain um spiel uh, or style mm -hmm. it's kind of it's getting for me it's getting redundant too fast uh, uh because he's always doing like kennst du kennst du kennst du hast du hier willst du you know he's kind of using the same set up uh, uh yeah. too often and then it's not not so um i i like comedy but you know sometimes i use uh, i like to use my brain a little bit more so um yeah the uh, J jay our guitarist has got a great uh a story he's told many times uh, about when when he was uh on, on tour with the dickies they were in one of the and uh, a nightliner coach you know you, you know and they, they woke up in germany one morning in leipzig I think leipzig where's the wave graphic treffen yes and uh as they opened the curtains there was like a street battle going on and it was like fascists versus communists in the street And they all had shopping trolleys full of bricks, and the, the whole, and they just closed the curtains on the coach and just went back to bed again in the middle of this war. I think where were they playing? They were playing the venue there. I'm trying to remember now. Not SO 63 That's in Cologne, isn't it? Uh, oh yeah, but but uh, I, I don't remember. know so many. Um, um... They did quite a few dates in, in, in Germany on that tour. Uh, I, we keep meaning to go over because we, we know a few people who do run a few festivals and, and stuff in Germany and we've got friends who always go over to like Rock and Ring and, and mm -hmm. things like that. But we just never get there. And now now we've got a little one, it makes it even harder. Mm -hmm. We did take her to, we took her to Reading Festival when she was three weeks old. Oh, cool. uh, the first band, first band she ever saw was Jimmy Eat World. Wow, which, that's a good one. I think it's quite a good band to say. By by the way, by the way, this was one of the things I wanted to ask you. Um, I couldn't find much live footage, uh, so for me it seemed to uh, that that there that you haven't played live much. La I mean, at the moment, yes, we have a pandemic. There is no live. I'm I'm taken, but. We, 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 have, we haven't. Yeah, okay, you uh, haven't. We, should, we, we, would, we would have played a lot, lot live quite a bit last year with the, with the album coming out and everything. But, uh, yeah, we've got more releases than we've done gigs. Okay. Uh, we're, at that, we're at that age where we like to just do some festivals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and with some nice catering in, uh, in the back... Uh, yeah. How you say in the in the backstage? Yeah, yeah, you, you, you know. Uh, I suppose when lockdowns are over, we will arrange to just do a really tiny little show because uh, I like to. I like. It's better to have a small venue, absolutely packed, than than, yeah, than, than a big festival. Show. And like, uh, yeah, you know, uh, it, you might have a lot of people there, but it only you know like. 200 in front of a stage look look ridiculous small or something yeah, yeah, yeah. so uh you, you, you know we'll, we'll probably we'll probably play a show of, of, you know when when lockdown's over uh we'll have to hope to get some festivals next year or you know, you know if we can get a support show with somebody but it's awkward because uh i've I, I have I have a three year old and <laughs> you mentioned you life. mentioned before. <laughs> I yeah, know. Yeah. It's taken over my life. Mm -hmm. No, I, I I know, I know. Is it is it your first I wouldn't is it your first child? Yes, oh ah, okay. She is my first child. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we she she'll run around the lounge listening to anything with guitars in and shout shout stage dive and then she 
She's already got stage dive and mosh pit and uh, the, the yeah, most important when, stuff. When, yeah, when 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 we were, when we, she, she was two, we we're, were at playgroup one day, and uh, I said to the uh, the vicar's uh, it was it was in the church, and I said to the vicar's uh, intern, I think he was, could you just watch her while I while I go to the to the bathroom. And uh, he said, yeah, and she, she, he's got his laptop out in front of him. And she says, uh, oh, will you put some music on? And he looks and said, what would you like? Imagining she's going to say some children's music. Mm -hmm. but, uh, think in part, please. Cool. I like your daughter already. Yeah, it's she, you know. he he would have thought or she would have thought uh, like uh, London Bridge is falling down or something, you know. Yeah, uh, exactly. So and uh, yeah, no. My my daughter likes some of the music I make as well. Not not much. She's she's more. My 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 wife is uh, absolutely opposite of me. She's into K-pop and stuff. So uh, my my daughter is a little bit influenced by this side, and it's okay. I don't have to understand it. But she likes some of so some of the songs I like. So and so that's okay. She's still my daughter. Yeah. Uh. I'm I'm hoping that that Daisy likes more of what I like than what her mum likes. Mm -hmm. Are you are you uh, similar with your wife? Does she has the same taste as you? No, not really. Okay. It's a bit more mainstream. Mm -hmm. she, you know, she 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 loves Biffy Clyro. She loves editors. Uh, But Biffy Claro is not is not is not bad. It's uh it's it's good music. No, I've I've seen I've, I've seen Biffy thirty times. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you know, I've I've seen it twenty nine times. <laughs> yes, I'm gonna fact check this. I'm gonna you know I'm gonna bleep it out if it's not right. I will censor yeah. it. I think I've seen Offspring thirty one times. Okay. When when you I I saw Fate No More once. Um, And and I saw Deepish Mode and I saw uh, Aha. I saw Aha once. Um, and 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 the cool thing is I saw Aha and Deepish Mode for free. <laughs> really? So, yeah, it's it was it was cool. Um, which which face no more was it? It would it would no. You were too young to have seen. The Chuck Mosley face no more. Oh no, yeah, this uh, this was after Chuck Mosley, but it was uh, right. I think it was uh, here the 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 real thing. Uh, so it must right. be the, the first tour after Chuck Mosley. So I still, uh, I got the original, um, you know, the first it's Fate No More with, exactly. Yeah. Um, and we, 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 we care a lot, you know, the, yeah. the hit. So uh, with Chuck Mosley, but of course, yeah, uh, I mean, um, what's his name? Uh, Bill, would, Mike, Mike Patton, Mike, Mike Patton. Patton. Yeah, he's great. I, I was great. very fortunate enough to see uh, Faith No More with Chuck and uh red hot chili peppers with uh hitals oh yeah, yeah the, the, the other guitar player um yeah oh, together uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. slovak slovan it, it was ital anyway wasn't it mm -hmm. uh together on the same bill cool uh, uh and a club gig about i suppose about 1980 88 when they had uh i think it was around the time of the Abbey Road EP, or it might have been just before that, but it was around that time. It was when the first album was out. Cool. That cool. Was, that was, they bore me stupid now to the Red Hot Chili Peppers live. Really? Okay, I haven't seen, so I cannot say how they are live. The last album I bought from them was uh, Californication. I really enjoyed that. So, uh, because, yeah, it was so simple but good. It was kind of nice, nice. Tunes, but yeah, you, you know, I, I since when I traveled. I like more... the uplift mofo party plan. Oh yeah, there. this one, this one is also there's uh, higher is is on there as well, right? Uh, um, yeah, fight like but... a braves on that. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, backwards, backwards is on that. That's that's, that's some some cool but, stuff. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but, but you know, when you see him playing the, the Super Bowl, and Flea doesn't even have his bass plugged in. Oh, I I didn't saw it. Yeah, it's it's just like you know how corporate do you want to be? Surely you've made enough money by now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, but but see, maybe that's that's a question for you because um, you are a free piece, 
And as far as I understand, uh, you don't have a trauma. So do you have a trauma for for um, playing live or does it come from, from a recording or something? How, how do you do uh, it I, when I, you play live? You program it, okay. Yeah. And live, we don't have a keyboard player live either. Oh, okay. So just think, although Paul made it, may start playing some keys live and then we'll program the bass. But we, we, we do use a fair amount of playback, mm -hmm. but everybody does. But what you see on stage, we are playing. Mm hmm. Okay, no, no, I, I get it, but but yeah, this this kind of as, as you said, you know, Flea had, didn't have even his, his uh, bass plugged in, so uh, I was just like, how do you do it, you know? Because um, yeah, yeah, we, we 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 just program mm -hmm. everything, uh, okay, and we don't we don't know what's 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 happening with Jay, whether he's going to be able to come back or whether, he, so we might have to do some gigs as a two piece. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll get, we'll we'll sync up back projections and smoke and, and make it interesting, you know. But there's been mm -hmm. some great two piece mm -hmm. pieces, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it's um, so, you know, you know what what, what 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 I what I did. <clears throat> I don't know if if you can see that. I have a little thing here. That's a um, that's a not drum free. And, and the funny thing is, it's a synthesizer. You play like a drum. Um, you know, it has pads where you can hit on and, and you can program things on it. And uh, it has effects and, and sounds. And, and the point uh, I, I wanted to make is um, because I'm, I'm also using sometimes backing tracks, you know, and, and to make it interesting that uh, if, I, if I have to do it all by myself, Uh, you know that I can still play something in 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 time and and uh, you know not standing around waiting for the next cue or thing you know because um, if you don't have a band around you it's it's a little bit awkward to be alone uh, there and uh, yeah the, well. the hardest the hardest thing about backing tracks is you have to be incredibly tight exactly people, people don't realize just how tight you have to be because when you have a when you have a drummer you miss your cue the whole band goes through the four bars again you come in i, I know you exactly try, you miss your cue and you're screwed we were doing uh, we were main stage at uh Gilfest and uh, we didn't have our own sound man or anything we we're using their sound men and You know, Roger Daltrey's headlining that night. Oh, wow. And Echo and the Bunnymen. We shared a dressing room with Echo and the Bunnymen. Uh, and uh, I said to him, left channel goes to front of house, right channel goes to the monitors. Mm -hmm. The set starts. We don't hear any clicks. So nothing comes through our side. So we don't know where the songs start. Oh, this is this is deadly. This is deadly because you can only you can only make it worse when you start singing at the front bar. Nightmare, you know, main stage at a festival, mm. and and I, 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 and the first three songs I think it was all ran into each other, mm -hmm. so we had no point of getting out. But after that, I, I hit, hit the foot pedal, and just. Swap the lead over so the right had gone, but you, do you know what I mean? It, and I must have asked him eight times, no oh, well. You've got it in the right channel, you mm -hmm. know. When because because we will use a cowbell as a click because it's mm -hmm. it, it pierces through everything if the when you're yeah. when you're up there. We, you, you made a good point, you know. Um, as I talk with a lot of artists, um, I in the past I have to admit. I would think that, oh, you're using backing tracks, you're cheating, you're, you know, it's so easy because, you know, you're always right, you're always on time and stuff. And, but now that, that I have used it myself, I can, you know, like, like you just said, it's really, um, it's much easier if you have a normal band because then you just look around and, uh, yeah, you know, we do, we do one more, we do, you know, and every, uh, you, you're off and, and then, you know, the, the drummer slowly 
puts it together again, you know, if you if you get your timing wrong. But with a backing track, it's no mercy. You know, you have to be yeah. there or you're gone, you know. And um, so it's actually in a way much tougher to play. The only thing is, of course, with uh, what what really sucks with backing tracks, in, in my opinion, and you can maybe tell me how you work with this, it's your set, you know, uh, the, the song is four minutes long and it's four minutes long. There is no like, uh, you know, the people are dancing and, you, you know, with a normal band, you look around and you give them an encore or you just play play on, you know, until they stop or something. Um, I, 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 I like the whole being rigid because I've put, I've put samples and I've put edits and all sorts in between the songs and and it can all flow in. Ah, so you have like a, like a full a full set already planned ahead kind of. Yes, yes. Ah, okay. So it's a it's it's absolutely you 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 know from walking on to the uh, uh, the socialist choir singing the red flag. <laughs> to, it's not a bad idea, yeah. I, I get it, but but then again, when you're even, um, so it's really like, basically, you hit start and then you go through the whole thing. It doesn't matter yes. what happens if people leave and and you cannot kind of oh we're gonna repeat this other song you wanted to hear or something. It's, okay, okay, you you really set in in. Uh, okay. We get up there, we kick some ass, we go home. <laughs> uh, we, we we've had some really aw awesome shows though. Uh, like we 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 played at Alan, you know Alan McGee, no. Creation Records, managed no. Oasis and the Jesus and Mary Chain and 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 worked with all that. Him and a friend of mine, Danny, had a club in in London, and we we played there. And it was a tiny venue, but it was absolutely sold out. And stage diving and. Crowd surfing, it was fantastic. I loved it. You, you know what I mean? We, mm -hmm. we, 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 we opened for a place to bury strangers, which was oh. very cool. Oh yeah, I know them. They are really cool. The, it was awesome. And, and I looked off stage while we we're playing, and the front row was a place to bury strangers. We stood right at the front watching us play, which I just thought was like the coolest. He made but some. Uh, Oliver from uh, a, a Place to Very Strangers makes those awesome uh, Death by Audio pedals. Okay. And really, yeah, every shoegaze band in the world should have them. They're, Death, they're, they're, Death they're by just, Audio? Okay. Yeah, they're, they're about about £400 a piece, these pedals, oh, but they're wow. really, really cool pedals. Uh, um, as, as, you, as you were talking about this... Um, it's just a fun, fun, fun question. But what kind of was, uh, as as you seemingly have shared the stage with a with a you know some some huge names. So what was um, a starstruck moment for you, where you kind of were like, oh, I'm gonna meet because I I found on your on your Spotify I think there was a, a, a picture with um, David Bowie, right? Or was it uh, was I mistaken there? Picture I was using it was Bowie talking to somebody ah, okay I've met, okay i've met loads and loads of people and the only time i've ever been starstruck was morrissey oh morrissey and oh wow asshole he's turned out to be really <laughs> yeah I'm, i i heard about i heard about this because and i was you know that's that's a good we, we could talk about this a little bit because i have also you know i i really liked um what's the actor's name who who uh um who played House of Cards? Uh, I I I don't remember. Kevin but Spacey. Kevin Spacey. Yeah, I I uh, I have. You know, it really makes me sad because I don't know really how to deal with that because I like the music, or I like the movies, and I really think, oh, this is so great and this is so good, and but but you know, I I kind of conflicted in my own head yeah. what to do with it. Oh, hello. Who who's that? <laughs> this is this is Nelly. Hello, Nelly. Hello. God damn it. There you go. Uh, yeah, um, Morrissey. Just mm. an asshole, really. It's a shame. Johnny Marr's nice. We, we, okay. We, 
yeah, I've met Johnny. He's he's nice enough. Uh, yeah, uh, we we were at uh, the Enemy Awards after after show after party. Okay. And, uh, uh, Liam Gallagher gave gave me a big hug and told me I was cool. Uh, That's cool too. <laughs> and and I wasn't sure who it was at first. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I wouldn't know if I if I would recognize, maybe, but maybe not, uh, but I wouldn't recognize. After I knew who it was, I knew who it was. But I've been, I've been very, very fortunate having been involved in music for many years and having friend, lots of friends who work in it and my wife works in it. And, and like, my mate, who was my best man at my wedding, he he's like, he's a booking agent, he's like Biffy's booking agent and Max Cavalera and uh, wow. editors and you know lots of people like that so I meet people with him and and just people I'm, I'm sort of friends with uh, I, I, a lot of people who who were in the charts years ago when, when indie was big mm -hmm. were all friends of mine and that so I've never really got You know, uh, I was very sad the other week when Mark Keds from Senseless Things died. So I knew Mark. Okay, I, I don't, I don't know him. I have to admit. Uh, he, Senseless Things were quite popular here, and two of them have gone gone on to quite big things. Uh, one of them, one of them's the drummer in uh, Gorillas. And oh, the, the cool. The other ones, the, the touring keyboard player with Muse. Wow. Uh, But they're all old mates of mine who I I used to you know hang out in the clubs with a, a lot. Uh, you know, I, mean, I I knew everybody back in that indie thing because I you know I, I was in a band that was kind of popular in that sort of in that scene. We were a rap metal band, but we were still popular amongst mm -hmm. you know it was it was very crossover. If you were an indie band, a punk band, a mm -hmm. uh, Camden type band. It all yeah. crossed over, you know. With, and it and it seems uh, like you know uh, what what I really like from what I what I hear from you is kind of, um, but I sometimes uh, I guess it was also back then maybe sometimes, but I uh, I think it's cool if some people y y you know but um, oh, how you oh, phrase it. Um, I don't mind if somebody is really successful and and and, and went uh, out, you know, and, and getting getting big and stuff. It's uh, I'm I'm happy for them, and and it's not like you know it doesn't detract from what I have done or what you have done. You know, it's just that they um, they had a, a lucky break and now we're up and they might come down or something, and. Um, You know, it's it's I I don't feel jealous. That's that's the, the word I wanted to say. It's kind of like I'm I'm no, more happy for them. To, to me, you you don't measure quality of music on pop by popularity. Yeah, we we talked about this before. You know, when when you hear the normal radio stations, it's it's uh, abysmal. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of boring as hell. You 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 know. Spotify like like to put the thing out that anybody can get on their playlists. Mm -hmm. Well, have, have a look at have, have a look at Spotify's industrial metal playlist. Is there anybody who's on a label smaller than Century Media? Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, it's the, the system is rigged, but um, but but that's why I'm, know, I'm. We we have we have a double Grammy winning producer, and we never get on one official. Spotify playlist. Mm -hmm. You know we have enough enough bombs to put in those in, mm -hmm. in, in the pitch. Mm -hmm. But 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 we're but we're we're on our own small independent label. Uh, but but just, uh, but you you're doing you're doing well. I mean, um, um, this is this is maybe um, a delicate question, so you don't have to answer it, of course. But. Um, You you have other sources of income, or are you living from from music uh, only? We 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 my 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 wife uh, has several companies. Companies. We, we also have a company. Yeah, yeah. And she she she's she's and and we've got role reversal in our house. Okay. You know, my wife's the main breadwinner, and I, and I'm the. Uh, 
the daddy uh, daycare. I, I feel you. My my wife my wife has a has a, a doctorate. You know, she's a PhD, and she earns more money than yeah. me. But we're not so far. But she she's she earns more than me. So and I I like it. You know, I think it's great. Um, but uh, I, I'm not allowed to to slouch off too much yet. <laughs> maybe maybe uh, one day. Maybe maybe. And and I you know and I don't think this uh, that's that's cool. But that, that you have the same thing. Um, I don't think it distracts from a man any anywhere. You know, I'm kind of like I'm just happy that such an intelligent woman, uh, you know, chose me to to marry. So that's that's uh, I'm lucky. Uh, hopefully she's she's not listening. But my my wife's awesome. She's very driven. She's she's dynamic. You know, you, you, you know I hear all this about inequality and pay gap and all, and all this bit, and I go well. I know so many successful mm -hmm. women, and um, uh, you, you know, within well, within fifty yards of my house, there's four women who earn more than their husband. Okay. You know that's like six or seven of you know, three or four houses either way. Yeah, and I, I, I like, like, like we talked about it earlier with, uh, with uh, racism stuff or so. You know, everyone can be an asshole. It doesn't matter. Uh, what and um, what, what I want to say, uh, what, why, why is it such a such a hard time for other people, you know, for other men to accept that their that their that their women earn more than them i think it's so so silly because it's like be happy man they have a lot of money you don't have to buy them dinner you you know i mean they can pay half of a house you're gonna buy or something or whatever you know uh, why why are men insecure a when, huh? or a whole house even better exactly um you know i i don't get the, the insecurity of men is it is it just because you you need a little a little i don't know a little child you know you can protect and you can take care of everything i hate it if if i have a my wife doesn't need me at all you know she she she's a she's a like yours maybe she's very self sufficient and whatever and and i'm only annoying her sometimes you know and uh, because you know i i play around with you know i'm, I'm i think we are we are a little bit similar but i'm more the, the player and and you know and not taking it so seriously the whole thing and she's very focused and you know she she gets things done and and accomplishes things and i'm like I'm I'm Just playing around. Hmm. But, but it works. We're happy. Exactly. You know, I that's... I do I do the laundry. So you know I I I do my part here, and and I feed our yeah. bunnies uh, once in a while. Have you uh, any more questions? Um. Actually, no. Um, uh, it was it was just nice to 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 chat with you. I I think I ask everything. Uh, no, yeah, I, I got everything. Um, yeah, so um, thank you very much for your time. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I think uh, for the listeners, we had no real um, conclusive goal, but this was exactly my goal. Uh, it was just a fun time to talk with you. Thank you for your well, openness. You said you, you said you wanted a chat with exactly with, with the AA, you know, and that's what we've done. It's been it's been really cool, and if people can. Go and check us out on Spotify and YouTube and Twitter. The, the, the link will be in the description. So, uh, you know, in, in the exactly just wait, wait click, 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 you know, I, I suck at this. Um, uh, yeah. So thank you very much for your time. Um, I let you go now. Uh, you might have to attend to somebody who is uh, just three years old. I don't know. Uh, hopefully she sleeps. No, no, she, she's asleep for the night now. OK, perfect. Perfect. So uh, thank you very much. Um, all the best, and I, um, yeah, I, I'm gonna hear you on my uh, radio station. Put me in your in your list. Uh, you know, yes, I will do.